Hi, this is Sean, and this is the UDK Introduction 3 video. In this video, we are going to go over white boxing, moving your BSPs around, snapping them to the grid, applying textures and moving those textures around, and then also playing the game and doing a play player start icon, um, as well as giving an introduction to game types. So let's get started. So here we are. And once again, the red brush is the builder brush. And we can take a look at this builder brush again in terms of the size and what it's set at by right clicking on the brushes icon. So um, if I see what this icon set at, it's 256 by 256 by 256. So you know, if we wanted it larger, we could set it 512 by 512. It's twice the size and the same height. One thing to also notice is, opposed to Maya, the default up axis is Z. So you can see that that's um, one major difference between UDK and Maya. Um, what else? Um, to add one of these builder brushes, you can click on one of these icons over here, or just simply hit Control A. So we can move this around. And also, by default, UDK has grid snapping turned on, increments of two. And so you can see all of these, the different powers of two here. I like to work at a grid snapping of 16. Why is that? It's a, sort of a good size if you're working on a medium sized level. Um, also in terms of proportions, the character size is usually about 96 units high, which is equivalent to around just a little over six foot high human size. Um, so anyways, those are the sort of rules of thumb. So. Um, I'm going to create a few of these and maybe I'll make a, a quick column. So let's build the column. If I can't find the builder brush, I'm sort of saying, where did the builder brush go? I can either hit the home key, which will go to whatever is selected, or there's a go to builder brush icon that's built into the newer versions of UDK. And so here it is. I've gone to the builder brush. Uh, one of the things that's sort of nice about UDK also is if I want to take this with me while I'm moving, instead of moving the camera, then moving the icon, if I hold down the shift key, I can move the, I can sort of constrain move the object and my mouse at the same time. It's kind of nice. So let's say that I want to make this cylinder hollow. That's nice. And I'm going to rotate it by hitting the space bar. And by default, the snapping is turned on for rotation, as you can see down here. I'm gonna hit Control A, but the rule is that it will apply the previously attached texture. So in this case, if I wanted to create, uh, if, so I have to apply a texture first, then if I wanna create another object, it will add that texture to the object. So you can see that happening. All right, how else can we modify the texture on these objects? Um, by hitting the F5 key, or under view, we can see the surface properties of BSPs. Um, we can go in and look at these surface properties. And by default, um, it should be applied at the setting of one in terms of how it's, it's uh, applied. If you go to lower numbers, you'll get higher texture density. So if we put this to 0.25, you should see this look much smaller, these rocks. Or if we go to like 4, we'll see much larger rocks here. Um, what else can we do? Well, one of the things that I'm noticing on this object here is there's texture seams. The texture isn't, um, not to mention, this huge texture seam. So how do I unify this whole thing? Um, well, I can select individual faces by holding down the control key and clicking. And then I can do a planar map and project the texture across all of those faces. And so you can see that that actually took care of the seam problem that I was getting um, on that object. I mean, and that's one of the things I'll be looking for in terms of the first grading in, in the white box assignment is that I don't want to see big seams where there shouldn't be big seams. So um, we can also slide these textures around. Um, so let's put another texture on this object. 
I'm going to attach it to the whole object. So I'm going to hit Shift D. And I'm going to right click and say Apply Material. I'm going to zoom into that object by hitting the Home key. One of the things that you'll notice is that if you have an object that is semi translucent, which is, uh, seems to be the case in this window material, sometimes you'll have a trouble selecting uh, your box. If you have trouble with that and you want to select the entire BSP, you either need to switch to a wireframe mode where you can see the BSPs back into shaded mode. And if I just hold down the control and shift keys at the same time, I will select the entire object, BSP. So let's move one of these BSPs around. Slide this here. So now I just moved this around, but in the viewport it's still here. What do I need to do? I need to rebuild this level in order to affect those changes to that object. And that's just one of the rules of, of UDK. So I'm going to apply a different texture to this object. Let's rebuild the surfaces on this object, see if that helps. So that fixed the problem once again. So let's um, see what else we can do with these BSP boxes. We can subtract from them. So if I go and create my um, builder brush and right click, I'm going to make it not hollow. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So let's say a height of 512, but an outer radius of 64. And so now we've got a pretty standard cylinder here. If we wanted to carve out something from this object here, you can see this is sort of like intersecting the object. We could use a Boolean operation. So I could sort of use a subtraction on the builder brush by hitting Control S. So now you can see I've sort of carved this surface in this object. And so this is a really convenient way of building uh, white boxing out a level and just sort of roughing everything in. Final thing that I'm going to go over is how to create a level start and also game types, a discussion of it very quickly. How do you create a level start? Well, you can right click and add actors. So you can see that we've talked in the past about adding lights. So here's adding a player start. And what does a player start do? Well, it looks like a little joystick. And it will, so you can see there's another one already built into the level. And you can see also there's an arrow associated with it. So the character will start at one of these joysticks and will be facing in that direction of the arrow. And that's required. At least one level start is required for every level. So in this case, um, I can always right click and test my level from anywhere. So I can sort of play from here. Um, but if I also hit this button right here, that will play an editor and it should launch my character from this point. Here I am. I've started and I can see my level. My lighting needs to be rebuilt, but we're sort of looking good. All right, a final discussion about level types. If you, level types will be determined by a flag that you give. And that's if you save your level, when you save your level for the first time, or if you can save as different file types. If you give it a regular name, my level, that's fine. It will just save as a default. But if you want to give it some other attributes like um, if you want your character by to default to have some of the attributes that would be included in a deathmatch game you'd put dm dash so if we save this with a dm dash and hit play you can see that i sort of start the game with a gun and a certain amount of ammo and a target screen. That's where we're going to stop for now. Thanks for watching.